This is part 9 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss query string parameters. At the moment, to get to this index Razor page in the employees subfolder, we have to provide a value for this name parameter. We included this name parameter to demonstrate routing in our previous video. We no longer need this, so let's delete that. And in the root pages folder, we also included this employees.cshtml razor page. Again, we included this in our previous video to demonstrate routing. So let's delete this as well. With these two changes in place, if we now navigate to slash employees, we see the list of employees. And this list is served by this index razor page in the employees subfolder. At the moment, when we click any of these buttons, nothing happens. When we click this view button, we want to pass the ID of this employee to the details razor page, which we don't have yet. We'll create it in just a bit. The details razor page will use the past ID and retrieve the specific employee details and display them. So the first order of business here is to add the details razor page. Let's add it to the employees subfolder. Let's name our razor page details.cshtml. There we go. We have the details page added. Now, when this view button is clicked, we want to send the user to the details razor page. And the details razor page is in the employees subfolder. So to send the user to the details razor page in ASP.NET Core razor pages, we use ASP-page tag helper and then specify the path of the razor page here. To the details page, we also want to pass the ID of the employee whose details we want to view. For that, we use sp-route-id tag helper. In this case, we are passing the employee ID. So after the last dash, we are specifying ID. If we want to pass the name of the employee in addition to ID, we can use another sp-route tag helper. And since we want to pass name, in this case, we use dash name. We can use as many ASP-Route tag helpers as we want, depending on the number of parameters that we want to pass to the details razor page. In this case, we want to pass just the employee ID. So we are using just one ASP-Route-ID tag helper. And to this, we want to pass the ID of the employee. And the employee's property on the model contains the list of employees. And this loop variable contains the each employee that we are looping over. And to get the ID of the employee, we can use the loop variable at employee.id. Reload this page for the changes to take effect. Notice now when I hold the mouse over the view button of this first employee, you can see down at the bottom the employee ID is passed in the URL as a query string parameter. Notice the ID value is 1 and for the second employee the ID value is 2. Our next order of business is to read this ID query string parameter value from the details page, retrieve the respective employee details and display them. In the details page model class, on this onGet method, let's include a parameter with the name ID. And remember, it is this onGet method that handles HTTP GET request to this details razor page. And our query string parameter name is ID. And this matches with the name of this method parameter. So model binding in ASP.NET Core is going to automatically map this query string parameter value to this method parameter. Our next step is to inject our data access service I employee repository into the details razor page. So for that, let's include a constructor. Using this constructor, let's inject I employee repository, call the parameter employee repository, bring in the required namespace by pressing control period, and let's also generate the required private field again by using control period. At the moment, this I employee repository interface has got only one method, get all employees. And as the name implies, this method returns the list of all employees. In addition to this, we want another method. Let's call this get employee. And this method is going to take the ID of the employee as a parameter and then return that specific employee. The implementation for this interface is in mock employee repository.cs file at the moment. We only have provided the implementation for get all employees. We also need to implement this get employee method. So let's copy the method signature, 
paste it right here and then make the necessary changes. We want this method to be public. We are going to write a link statement. So let's bring in system.link namespace. And all we want this get employee method to do is return that specific employee. So for that, on the employee list, let's use first or default link method employee such that the ID of the employee equals the incoming ID. Next, in the details page model class, inside this onGet method, we want to call this get employee method. So for that, let's use this injected I employee repository interface. On that, we have get employee method to this. Let's pass this incoming employee ID parameter and the return value of this method. Let's store it in a variable called employee. We don't have this property yet. We'll ask Visual Studio to generate that by pressing control period and then select this option generate variable and then this first option generate property. This is going to generate a public property for us. Notice we have a public property here employee of type employee and our display template has access to this public property. In the display template the first thing that we want to do is compute the employee photo path. We already have an expression for that in the index tracer page and it is right here. So let's copy this and then change the bits that are required. It is this employee property in the page model class that contains the details of the employee that we want to display. And to access this property in the display template, we use the model property with a capital letter M and on that we have employee property. So if photo path is not null, then use that as the photo path for the employee. Otherwise use no image dot jpg. And we have that no image dot jpg and the respective employee photos in the images folder. Next, in the interest of time, I'm going to paste some HTML here and quickly walk you through it. We are using the bootstrap card to display the employee details and to get the bootstrap card we are using the bootstrap class card and then we've got the bootstrap card header, card body and the card footer. In the card header we are displaying the employee name and in the card body we are displaying the employee photo and for that we are using the image element. Notice we are setting the source attribute of this image element to the photo path variable that we have computed right here. Just below the photo, we are displaying the rest of the employee details. That is the employee ID, email and department. And finally, in the footer, we have these three buttons, back, edit and delete. Edit and delete buttons doesn't do anything at the moment. When we click the back button, we take the user back to the index razor page that displays the list of employees. At the moment, notice I'm using the relative path because both details and index razor pages are in the same subfolder employees. We can use the full path if we want that starts with a forward slash. For example, we could have used slash employees slash index because in this case, both these razor pages are in the same subfolder. I chose to use relative path. With all these changes in place, let's build our solution. We have to build our solution because we have made changes to this class library project as well. Notice now when we click view, we see that respective employee details. And when we click back, we go back to the index view that displays the list of all employees. To pass employee ID to the details razor page, we use sp-route-id tag helper. By default, employee ID is passed in the URL as a query string parameter. We'll discuss how to pass this as a route parameter instead in our next video. And then model binding in ASP.NET Core is going to automatically map this query string parameter value to the ID parameter on this onGet method. At the moment, in the URL, we have a mix of upper and lowercase letters. What if you want all these characters to be in lowercase? Well, ASP.NET Core allows us to configure that through route options object and we do that in configure services method of the startup class. Notice we are configuring route options. We are missing the required namespace. Let's bring that in by pressing control period. So this route options object is present in Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Routing.
And then we are setting lowercase URL's property to true. The default for this is false. Let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice now all the characters in the URL are in lowercase, but the query string parameter ID is still in uppercase. One way to change this to lowercase is to manually change it on the index razor page right here. If it's one page, then fine, but in a real world application, we'll have hundreds of pages and hundreds of query string parameters. So manually changing them on individual page is not only tedious and time consuming, but also error prone. The easiest way to do that is to set lowercase query strings property to true. Even for this property, the default value is false. And one important point to keep in mind is for the query strings to be generated in lowercase, lowercase URL's property must also be set to true. Otherwise, setting this property alone to true will have no effect. In addition to these two properties, we also have append trailing slash. And when we set this to true, as the name implies, it's going to append a trailing slash at the end of the generated URL. Let's save these changes and take a look at the browser. Notice now at the end of the generated URL, we have a trailing slash and the same is true right here. And when we view a specific employee details, notice the query string parameter ID is in lowercase as expected. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.